All right, Jeremy Veldman with the Memphis Astronomical Society. Welcome to another edition of Telescope Tips. And today I'm here with Rick Honey, amateur astronomer who's also our president. And Rick is gonna share some tips, observing tips. And you can see his Dobsonian telescope right here. And Rick, what do we got? What's going on? Well, this is my 13 inch Coulter Dobsonian telescope. It's old, not as old as me, but old. Um, but it's a very good telescope. They were inexpensive back in the day, and uh, you could occasionally get one with superb optics in it, and this is one of those. It's got superb optics. It's yeah. been a telescope I've really enjoyed. And we talked about this telescope earlier. This is actually one of the best dobs that you've used in terms of ease of use, balance, um, just really overall, the, the overall user experience. You just really have enjoyed using this telescope. Absolutely. I've, I've used a lot of other dobs. I've worked on a lot of other people's telescopes because I like working on this stuff. And uh, I've really yet to find another dob that operates as smoothly as this one and as easy to use as this one. And uh, I've been in love with it ever since. It's certainly easy to transport, too. Pretty easy. Well, to that part, not so much. Oh, well, <laughs> I guess it depends on your viewpoint. Right. But anyway, you're out here. It's an observing site. You get your telescope set up, you get uh, you start looking at some views right after the sun goes down. I've had this experience too. Sometimes you get objects in the scope and you're, you're disappointed with what you're seeing. They're blurry and maybe you feel like the optics are off, maybe your, your scope isn't collimated right. What are your thoughts on basically that moment, when it, if and when it happens? Well, my experience, and it started actually with another 10-inch telescope, uh, but what I found was I'd spent a whole lot of money on a very nice telescope, and I was extremely disappointed in the view that I was getting. And what I found over time was that I wasn't giving the telescope or what I was trying to do enough time. So my recommendation is, and this is especially true for planetary stuff, but it's also true on deep sky objects. Sit down. Get a chair. Sit, set, set your telescope up where you can sit down at it and look at what you're looking at. Stare at it for a while. What you'll find is typically the atmosphere will get just right. It'll clear up that turbulence and stuff that's going on to keep seeing from being very good. It will clear up for just a brief moment. They're fleeting moments. You won't recognize it the first time you see one. You'll think maybe you got to rub your eyes to clear them up or something. Uh, but they'll come. And uh, it takes sitting at the telescope for, I don't know, I, I can remember sitting, looking at Jupiter one night for maybe an hour or so. So just off and on, looking at it, changing eyepieces, staring at it for a while. But there were some of the most beautiful views of Jupiter I'd ever seen. Um, Mars is pretty much the same way. If you'll uh, sit down at your telescope, you know, uh, maybe have a glass of wine or two, <laughs> little little herb, you'll see those canals yeah. that uh, yeah. uh, Lowell Lowell saw. Yeah, Lowell saw. <laughs> yeah, right. But see, the key is you got to be patient. Sometimes be it patient. doesn't happen. You got to. It takes time for the atmosphere to stabilize, and then also the mirror too because you have air currents going over the mirror that can cause the, the images to be blurry, the primary mirror. So, you know, it, it, it takes time for your, your mirror to settle down, your telescope to settle down, and even the atmosphere itself to settle down before you start to really, you know, see, have good seeing conditions. And, and what you'll find out too is that the bigger the telescope, when, you know, aperture is always better, more is better. But the bigger the telescope, the more these problems will appear more the uh, atmospheric distortions will be apparent. So patience and be comfortable. Patience and comfort. Well, all right. Well, thank you very much, Rick. Another telescope tip from Rick Honey, our president. And again, guys, I want to remind you that the Memphis Astronomical Society meets once a month, first Friday of the month at Christian Brothers University. Meeting starts at 8 o'clock. You want to learn more, our website is memphisastro.org. We also have two observing sessions that we schedule every month if the weather's clear in dark sky locations where you can meet Rick, myself, this telescope, other telescopes within the group. It's a great opportunity to learn about astronomy and explore the universe. Again, our website is memphisastro.org. 
Thanks for watching this episode of Telescope Tips, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks, Jeremy.